We're a small but mighty crew. So today we're talking about games and presentations. We're going to go specifically into Genially and Kahoot and uh, see the back ends. Uh, we're going to play a Genially. We're going to play a Kahoot. Uh, get excited. Uh, they're not hard questions. <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. Um, and uh, this is a very casual, fun thing. It's all about games. So y'all know me. Here I am. I really just do this for this recording sake at this point. Like if it's on YouTube, people are like, who is this lady? It's her. Um, oh, I didn't change the table of contents, but that's not what we're talking about. So great. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is gaming and presentations. So um, let's cover some reasons why gaming might help you when you're presenting. And I always, as always with these sessions, I try to gear it towards like if you're teaching a class, right, but also if you're doing like a conference presentation, if you're training students, right, when I talk about presentations, I'm talking about any situation, like even this, right, of just like teaching people in this kind of space, right, where you're using some kind of slideshow. So gaming is hot right now. I don't know if y'all knew it, but gaming's hot right now. I had a feeling it was hot right now, like in my uh, soul, but I did some research and I was right. Um, it wasn't just a like uh, squishy feeling. Um, I was correct. So um, it's, I think um, what they're saying in the trends is that, you know, everyone out there was home right now. And even if um, more of us are working from home than ever before, right, we're in this kind of state of wanting to feel more engaged with stuff. So corporations are using games um, in their um, work uh, flows more than ever before. Um, so they're turning into this kind of gaming, right, like bad Badging, game. We're going to talk about badging a little bit, but like I call it also kind of the Peloton phenomenon. Like, have y'all heard of Peloton? Um, where people are like into this like reward system, right? Even if it can't be uh, monetary, right? Which is like what we prefer. I always think of that meme of like pizza party, you know, instead of like healthcare raises. Like, that's not funny. It's sad and true. But, you know, gaming is a way we can kind of gently, you know, encourage people, um, engage our users, right, in a fun, low stake way. Um, both Kahoot and um, Gina Lee, like they don't track the data in the same way that like quizzing would. We're not really talking about quizzing. We're talking about, um, again, a fun kind of thing. Um, so yeah, thanks for the meme, Jenny. Um, I'll open it up in a little bit. Um, it's always sad, like the like little hand, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So um, when this talks to like not just us as like workers, right, um, students are saying that they like it as well. So I think a lot of this um, kind of applies to us. So just like antidotally, not data driven, antidotally, I have noticed that when I am doing in-person instruction, I've been incorporating more like Kahoot specifically for me in my teaching. And when I do my assessment at the end where I send out a form and say, what did y'all like, you know, not like about this session, the Kahoot is always the most highly ranked things um, of all the things. Students are getting really excited about Kahoots. It's just something, again, antidotally for me, I am noticing. So for me personally, I'm trying to find more ways to kind of gently have a fun moment with our students, which I think, again, um, you know, I haven't done a lot of research on this, but I think there's a kind of connection to where we're at now in 2022 with like trauma informed pedagogy, right? Like we're respecting our students, we're respecting our patrons, but we're also like meeting them, you know, in a place of that we're all a little uh, burdened by the world right now, right? So again, just these like low stake way to engage our users. Um, there's a graph, right, of um, things over here um, of like gamification statistics from 2022. It is from a corporate, you know, like business place about like why they think gaming is the future. A part of this article that's linked here, if y'all want to read it later, and I'll link to these slides at the end, um, is that like it's a corporate place being like, here's the future of gaming in a corporate setting. But again, I think it's relevant for how we're teaching our students as well. So um, to game or not to game, right? I think this is cool. I think this is fun. I think it's a low stake thing we can do. And we're going to show what I mean in a little bit by like these low stake games. But I don't necessarily think it's necessary everywhere. So the big things to think about if you're like doing a presentation and you're thinking about should I throw in a game or not is like, who's your audience, right? Is there like, for example, like I have a, um, if I'm teaching a grad student class, right? And it's a 50 minute class and they are just like really stressed about an assignment and they just really want to demo and talk to me about their research in that way to kind of stop the flow of conversation and be like, we're going to play a Kahoot. Like might not be <laughs> like the best, right? Whereas like, again, for an 
undergraduate class where um, you know we've already kind of gone over their assignment. We've like had some activities where they're searching, and we're just kind of trying to do a low stake activity at the end to kind of wrap it all up, go over the major points. That's okay, right? So I think being flexible with it, like making a game, but maybe if in the middle you realize like they're not in a good mindset to do this, um, is okay to like abandon your plan <laughs> and just to say never mind, we're done, or like, you can just ask me questions. Uh, like Steve and I did a class the other day uh, where the tech wasn't working, right? And we were like, we're just gonna um, have this be more conversation-based. So again, being flexible is uh, totally a good idea. Um, and also thinking about your audience too, uh, most of these tools we're going over do have some form of audience limit, right? And um, when we're talking about these games where we're putting people in these games and they're competing against each other, really the more, the larger your audience gets, the more overwhelming the game can get. Um, another thing to consider with these types of games that I'm not going to like harp on today, um, but, you know, in terms of like neurodivergence, respecting, you know, uh, the principles of universal design for learning, right, not everyone's brain uh, likes the competitive nature of a game, even if it is low stakes, um, they might be bothered by the graphics, the animations, so I always do recommend for these kind of things making it optional, like, you know, not being like everyone has to get in, um, just kind of saying whoever feels comfortable getting in and having fun with this great um if not that's totally fine um you know again y'all know your your audience better than i do that's just some um things to think about um so another thing about games and i think i've heard like jenny you say this about teaching in general right is that like it's really about comfort level so if you have the teaching style right where you really it's better for you to like stick to a script that you have these like very set learning objectives right and you don't feel comfortable with the technology you're feeling a little overwhelmed by something going on or whatever I don't, there's no pressure to me to do these games. Um, they're really, again, these low stake ways to do this. Um, so practicing is always recommended. You know, if you if all ever need a, a person to test a link or whatever, feel free to chat me. I'm like happy to do it. I like to see the different games people are making. Um, but yeah, like chatting it to your friend, testing it out, jumping in a Zoom room, um, you know, pulling someone into your office, whatever you feel comfortable with and saying, what do y'all think of this? How would this work on your phone is a good example. Most uh, Gina Lee and Kahoot do have a preview sample where you can see how it looks for your audience. Uh, but again, having a game plan of how it's going to work, feeling comfortable in the moment is, I think, important to these things. Okay, so we're going to start with Kahoot, which is always like the first one I learned about. It's a classic. It's the one I've been using in all my undergrad class. I think, Lois, you saw me do it in that math class, right? Um, it got well reviewed in that math class, Lois. They, they liked it in the form. Uh, so it's a classic for a reason. So we're going to go over that one first. Um, so um, we're going to show what Kahoot is. I think we all in this room um, know what Kahoot is, but it is a game based questions. And for the free version, you can only do um, like a four question multiple choice or true or false. Those are your only two options. So to do the other stuff, you need to pay for a um, pro account, which like, I'm not telling anyone to pay for anything. <laughs> um, you know, but you could talk to your boss. My boss is in the room here. Um, or you could talk to um, someone who has money control. Maybe you could use uh, professional development money if that's something that people wanted to experiment with. Um, but um, for now, Kahoot, the free version, which is what I use in every scenario, has those two types, multiple choice and true or false. Um, you can add images, I think, for up to two questions, but after that, you aren't allowed to. So I just never add images. Um, and as far as I know, there's not a question limit. Um, for these undergrad classes that I'm typically doing, I keep it to around five to seven, depending on how much time I have or what I'm really trying to cover. Um, but again, it could change. Like, I think I've seen uh, the library do trivia where they've asked like 30 questions, right? And you can just keep pacing. Uh, they do have like a default template that we're going to go into. Um, and it is not anonymous. So like, you know, like I haven't seen this happen lately, but I have seen it happen where someone will put in like boobs, you know, or whatever. And you're like, we can see that whoever did that. And if you win, this is going to be really awkward, you know, like, um, so I just kind of tell the students like this, y'all know, but usually again, for me personally, antidotally, every time I'm like, we're about to pay a Kahoot, the students like, are like, let's do it. Like they know they like, they got their phone out. They're ready to go with it. Um, so I haven't had to do a lot of like explaining of what it is. Um, so um, the audience limit is 50 people. And in my experience, when you get above 30, you're getting a little, again, it's getting to be a crowded space right um, in there. So I have not really played around beyond 30. I'm typically doing it in these like uh, undergrad, you know, 
sections. Is that what they're called? You know, where they're like 25 ish people. And that works. That's worked great for me personally. Um, of course, we've done it with that library trivia where there's been like around 50 in there, uh, but 50 is the limit for the free version. Um, music does play automatically. So if you are in a classroom, in a conference session, whatever, just be cautious of that, right? Like if you like, if the volume's turned way up and you haven't been doing anything that requires volume, it can really, I'm sure y'all have seen that, right? Where it's like blared all of a sudden, you're like, oh no, I forgot. Um, so you just, you know, be cautious of the volume. Um, I usually just turn the volume down or turn it down so low that it's just kind of like a humming, you know, noise in the background. Okay, so if y'all want to um, come with me on this journey, y'all can um, go on Kahoot through this link. Um, so I am already logged in. Um, y'all can log in as well um, into your Kahoot. Um, yeah, I'm still logged in. Um, and this is just the basics of what it works looks like. So if you've never logged into Kahoot before, you can um, use your well, I guess I'm technically supposed to tell you, like, it's not a UNCG, like, ITS supported tool. It is a free tool online. Uh, so we're all using it at our own risk. Um, but saying that, I've had no issues um, with it. Um, and uh, I just, again, I do the free version. I don't give them my credit card or anything. So just to give you an idea of what you would be paying for with the different models, um, if you, uh, you know, like, again, have professional development money, your department wants to talk about it. Um, there's a lot of different options, of course, right, where you can pay by the year or not. Um, the things that you're really getting with is more question types, right? So like, again, right now with the free version, we can only do multiple choice, true or false. Um, but for other stuff, you can have more people, you can have more collaborators on Cahoots, um, more question types, right, the more money you pay. Um, more like editing privileges, that kind of thing. So notice with this one, I guess you can get up to 2000 participants, which again, yikes, that seems like it would be a lot in a Kahoot. But for now, we're just looking at the free version. So you have this home, right, where they are, most of these gaming softwares offer you a lot of different things, right? Like courses, right? Groups, things like that. What I do is I am just creating, right here, create, and then I'm creating Kahoot. I have um, personally not messed with the courses. That's not something I'm really interested in because to me, we have like Canvas, right? Um, but this is all the other stuff we can do with it. Um, but again, a lot of times they might be luring you uh, to look at the pricing. So sometimes you might click on this and they might say, well, yeah, you could get this, but see like this one I can tell right now because of the star is if I pay more money, I can get an interactive teacher's guide to building community, right? Um, I can probably do some basic things with teaching slide and more, uh, but to create a regular game in Kahoot, I'm just gonna say create. Um, so they give you this as your starting question. Notice this is where you can add your media, but you can only add media up to two things. Uh, you do get a couple of free templates that you could play with. And then again, if you keep scrolling down, they're going to start pushing you into the templates that cost money. I personally don't mess with this. I just leave it on the regular standard template with the like background, uh, but you could play around with these other free ones right up here. Um, like summer's cute. If you were doing like a summer workshop, uh, maybe as it gets cold, I'll do winter. Uh, but for now, I'll just leave it blank, right? Um, so then for the question type, here are my four um, answers, right, um, that I could switch to. But you can click here, right, and change it from a quiz, which gives you the four options to true or false. Um, again, you can notice here that any other type does go up into the premium, right? Like collect opinions, puzzle type answer. Y'all have seen this a lot, but like Mensimeter, Google Forms, things like that can be used for other things right so i again we just i just use kahoot for the fun the fun gaming feature so it's automatically set um to uh 20 seconds as the time limit um i usually don't change that i have found that like for the quick and questions that i'm answering they don't typically need more than that and if there's like 15 people in a space and they all answer it in five seconds it immediately moves on Right, because every if everyone in the Kahoot who's playing answers it fast, they just move on to the next question. Um, and then you know standard points, you can double points um, or add no points if you didn't want to even do a point system. Um, and then single select, right, or um, 
sorry, my like Zoom space moved. Um, let me move it back. Um, multi, you know, that's our only option, right? Um, where you, there is only one right answer. Multi-select is a professional. Um, you know, again, this like upgrading your service option. So we can just type our question up here. Um, uh, what is the weather today? And uh, then you do have to select, you know, sunny, rainy, um, cloudy, um, freezing, and you do have to pick one right answer. So see how they're bouncing? They're saying, you need to tell me which one is correct. Um, right now where I am, it's sunny, right? So on and so on, right? Uh, this would of course be an awful question to plan <laughs> for a course because like, who knows what the weather is, but I'm just showing an example. So to add a question, that's what we're doing. Um, a slide is like, an, like if you wanted to add like a in-between, like right, not a question, maybe I want to add information. Maybe I asked a question about citations um, and I want to follow up the little lecture about citations. Uh, you could add a slide and put some information on it. That is like content. So you can only do a very basic slide uh, with that option, right? Um, everything else starts costing money. Again, all of these free programs are going to do this, but classic is just like, again, a basic slide. You can add title and then some basic text and some media. Again, you do have limits of media, um, and this is the only layout you can do with the classic slide. Um, so I'm going to add another question. Um, I'm going to add true or false this time. Um, Sam has two daughters, right? True or false? True. So when you're done, you know, you can, of course, keep adding to it. There is no question limit, even for the um, free one. You can always save, but it is cloud-based, right? Um, it's going to tell me I need to add a title. So we add the title up here, um, ULVLC testing ground, so on and so on, right? So now I have this saved, saved. Um, no, no, it just took a while to save it. I don't know, it's saved. You can also preview it up here, right? So when you, here it is, how, how it looks and you can go through the slides and see how it looks, right? For your students as they play it. So the way I um, then get, you know, like, I don't, oh, I don't have a title on the slide. Okay. Okay, so when you're done and you've saved it, you can test the Kahoot, which we just really kind of previewed it already. You can play now or you can share it with others. Um, sharing with others is not how you're actually going to play it. Um, usually what I do when I design a Kahoot is I just get out of it, right? And then when I'm teaching in a class or in a conference or in a training session, I'm lo I log into Kahoot right? Like next to whatever I'm demoing. And then when I'm ready to play, I just open it up and I say start, right? So then that's what will ask you whether you're doing classic mode or team mode. Team mode would be if you're splitting them up into teams and having them compete into teams. Um, and what we're going to do classic mode where everyone is just individually on their own. So I am actually um, going to show you one that I already made. Um, and I'm going to say start. Right, and we're going to go into classic mode again. Y'all have seen a Kahoot, so I'm not going to harp on this. I just wanted to show you how it looks, right? So, like, you would log into your phone with this pen. Um, y'all can do it if you want. Um, I'll do it just to have someone in there so y'all see it. Um, another thing is like, so I have a couple of the sessions I've been in, like, had the teacher at the beginning be like, no phones, right? But then I'll have to be like, oh, actually, like, uh, we're going to play a Kahoot. So they do need their phone for the Kahoot. Uh, so just be prepared that students do need a phone. But if they don't have, again, if they don't have a phone, I always just tell them you can use a browser. You can, of course, use your laptop. Um, but you can also, um, you know, just uh, watch the fun. Um, I have started bringing swag with me. We do have swag upstairs. Um, and that has been pretty popular with the students. Um, and we are going to go LOLs. So anyway, I'm going to go because there's three of us in here and see now y'all are seeing what's happening on your phone. This is what's happening on my phone. They give you a countdown. You get to see it up here first, right? Um, and then you say true or false based on the color code. And then it is like answers. So like when the third person answers, see how it moves on before the 20 seconds, right? So then we see that we all got it right. 
And then you as the teacher can just move on to next and it shows you who's at top. Jenny, you're winning. Great job, Jenny. And again, I just will tell the students like, great job, Aaron, great job, you know, whoever. Um, and then we go from there. And see, this is gonna go fast because there's just three of us. When there's 15, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. I'm like praising them in between the middle, right? Um, and then we, yeah, here's the one that's kind of hard. Where did I go to undergrad? This is like a bonus round, if y'all know where I went to undergrad. Everyone got it right. Good job. NYU is where I went. I'm getting ahead now, but I guess because I made the questions, this might be a little unfair. But um, ROI requires every liaison to use games when presenting. False. We don't do that. We don't require that stuff. So then it shows you this podium and then, you know, you get to praise the students and it's fun. Um, usually again, the student, whoever wins, I'm like, oh, I got some swag. Do you want? They're like, yeah. Sometimes I forget swag and they will come quick into my office or to the reference desk and demand swag. So it's kind of cute. I love it. Um, so it's fine. Oh, sorry, Lois, that you didn't get to play, but you know how Kahoot works. So great job, Jenny. Go get yourself a straw. I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> one day uh so there you go so that's kahoot do y'all have any questions or um want to ask them anything or have any stories about using kahoot i have a question yeah. I, I when i was using kahoot a lot a couple of years ago like pre-pandemic um I mean, I still use it, but I was using it a lot for a while and students like most students are really familiar with it um, mm -hmm. a lot from other classes or like from high school. Mm -hmm. Is that still like your sense that students and I have been trying to honestly who inspired me to do this was um, Candace. So Candace asked me about gaming in classes and I was like, oh, I haven't done it in a while, but like, you know, I'm teaching more in person and in May I um, when I when I open up my Kahoot, right, I'm logged in, I'm going to play, I ask, does anyone not know what Kahoot is? And I have yet in the, you know, all of September, um, and a little bit in August, have anyone say, no, what is it? Um, and then usually, if there is like one person, my plan is always to say, um, okay, let me just quickly kind of go over some things as people are signing in, right, because you can have the start up with the pin, um, and people be logging in and you can say, okay, you're going to like go here to kahoot.it, um, put in your name or like, you know, an abbreviation of your name. And then um, we're going to ask you true or false or multiple choice questions. Um, and you're going to pick the color and shape and it is time-based. And again, like I really stress that it's all for fun. And if anyone seems at all hesitant, like, ooh, you know, I'm just like, you don't have to play, don't worry about it. Like, you know, um, and it's been going fine. Um, does that answer your question? I mean, again, I have not yet in the um, month I've been using it more heavily had a student be like, what, what is this? So, yeah, no, that that's good. And, and what I was finding when I was using it a lot was that, yeah, like you said, I was like, y'all don't have to do this. It's not, yeah, <laughs> not for a grade or anything, but also like, uh, some students would get like super competitive, like in a funny way, not, not in a, you know, yeah, I mean, like, way. uh, Whoever, went, I, in my experience, one only one time, and I think that was in that math class that you were at, Lois, was I like, I have swag, so the, the top three podium people can come grab a straw. Have I been like, someone who was like in the top three was like, no, I don't want that. You know? <laughs> like, and I'll say like, well, do you want me to go grab you other swag? Um, and, you know, this one person was like, nope, I'm good. You know? So they were kind of like, nope, i I'm good. I don't want this. But usually when I'm like, oh, I have this swag or like, oh, I forgot swag, but like come to the reference. I mean, I've had students follow me like out of the classroom and be like, I'm coming with you to get swag. And I'm like, OK, let's go get you some swag. Um, so, again, yeah, I've had but I haven't had anyone get like um, aggressive or anything. If that happened, I think I would just, I guess, shut it down and be like, OK, this was for fun but we're done. Um, I've also been mostly using it in spaces where the teacher is there. So I think, you know, they have a presence of like, hey, don't, y'all, don't, don't do this. This was, this was for fun, but you ruined it. Yes, exactly. Um, it happens, you know. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Gina Lee, um, which actually I think has like a dot in the middle between the two L's. Um, 
where I did it here, but I didn't do it everywhere. So Genially is like an interactive, like it creates interactive presentations, um, interactive websites, interactive infographics, right? Um, so it's not just gaming, but it does have a gaming feature, which we're going to go over today. Um, you can create an unlimited amount of sessions similar to Kahoot. I did not see a limit. Um, I did not see a limit on questions either. Uh, I could also not find a person um, limit on any Thing that they said. I googled it. I tried all kinds of things. Um, so maybe there isn't one, um, but I like find that hard to believe. Um, it does say unlimited views, but I don't know if that means like unlimited participants in these games. Who can say? But you'll see the games don't work the same way as Kahoot. You put the questions in. So I'm going to show you how this works in a little bit. So it works differently. So I guess that is part of where the limit part is, um, I, you know, like, you know, that there is no limit, right? Because you are presenting a like slideshow, asking questions, and then you kind of ask the audience, which is the right answer. And someone needs to like raise their hand and say it. That's how um, Julie works, which we're going to go over in a little bit. Okay, so they just, they have all these options. I just wanted to show you and I did not have time to dig into them, right? But you can create interactive presentations, infographic, video presentations, images, um, and more, right? Guides. Um, I have seen the um, ATSs for HHS have been using, I don't know which one of these, but one of these to create home pages in Canvas where they're like, you know, button-based home pages, right? Um, so you might see that throughout other things. Another example I've seen is the UTLC made an infographic on trauma-informed pedagogy um, that's interactive. So um, this is through Gina Lee, right? So it's, I love this, like it's very, I think, pleasant to look at. And like, then you could click on it and it tells you what they mean, right? By like experience. Um, event, um, etc. Um, I am not positive about the accessibility of um, this. Um, I have not uh, tested this. Uh, when you Google Genially and accessibility, it says um, like it's pretty good. Um, but notice um, uh, Stephanie made this. I need to give Stephanie credit. Um, when they emailed this, they did have a link to a text version. Right, so I guess that would be uh, probably better, I would imagine, than like this on a screen reader. Um, so it's always something to keep in mind with any kind of interactive, right, um, that a lot of times it's hard to be 100% ADA compliant with this kind of thing. But I just thought it was cool and show you that it can be made. Um, okay, but for today, we're going to go into um, Genially. So if you all want to come along with me, here is the link uh, to logging into Genially, creating an account. Um, I created an account um, earlier this week. What's today? Today's only Tuesday. Wow. So I did this uh, Monday, full disclosure. <laughs> I made an account and I went in and I messed around. Um, and here is what it looks like for me when I log in. Um, so if you wanted to make a game, you would click on Create Gamification. Um, again, I did not mess with this other stuff, but um, feel free. Um, so I'm going to create a game. So when you create a game, it gives you um, uh, free ones. And then again, not free ones. Um, I guess I forgot to verify my account. Hopefully that's not going to be an issue today. But if it is, I'll just have to go do that. But like, you know, they have the ones with the stars, which to me would mean premium, right? You can't use these unless you're paying premium. But anything without a star, you could use. So I'm going to try this like genial quiz, right? And I'm going to use this template to make my game. And I'm just going to keep it in that classic. So the way Genially works um, in terms of their gaming quizzes is that they give you these templates. And then they give you um, this like lorem ipsum test text that you can fill in. Um, so you just click on it and you can then you know start editing. Um, so here it is. Oh, it's not letting me edit that right now, but here. Okay, now I can edit this. So this is where you're going to ask the question. So uh, what is the name of Sam's dog, right? And then see where I'm going to write the correct one. So here is where I'm going to put the right answer. And you can change the order so you can move these boxes around to wherever you want. But this is the right answer, right? And then you're going to put other options here, um, 
right? So like other dog names. Um, so here we are. And then, so when you present, right? When I'm presenting this to an audience, I'm just gonna preview it, right? I would like ask my audience, what is the name of Sam's dog? And then someone would raise their hand or say it in chat. And then if it was the right answer, it takes you to the lorem ipsum text of the next one. Or you said, yes, that's right. So that's how um, their gaming system works. Um, so um, you can see here, then it just pushes you through um, and then quiz complete as it moves you on to the right one. So if I pick the wrong answer um, on this one, this is what it does. And then you have to go back to try again. So it's more, um, it does require participation and that people have to participate in the chat. Or again, if you're in person, raise their hand and say it. And then you as the presenter pick the one. Um, there is probably a way to send it out to be done asynchronously, right? Um, all set, uh, you know, you can make it public, private, all that stuff. Um, but I did not experiment with it too much that way. It does default, but you can present it, you can share it. Right, and then they would just do it asynchronously um, through a link or email. Um, you can also download it as a JPEG or a PDF and it works again in a similar way, but it wouldn't have that kind of dinging and music. Um, you can add pages, of course, it gives you these default amount of pages, right? But if you add a page, you can do it that way. Um, and then there are, you can add images, resources. There are things when you start adding um, images, they will start like, you know, saying there are limits on that. Um, and then here are options over here on the right. You can, again, share it for people to do asynchronously. You can make a copy of one that you've been using over and over again. Um, and again, the down, I guess you cannot download it. That is a premium option. So you do have to just present it through the cloud with the free version. Are there any questions about how this works? And then we're gonna play a genially. You can add background audio. Okay, so here's the one I made and we're gonna play it so y'all can see how it works. And this does have like music, so uh, you'll see how it sounds. And it has movement and things like that. It's just a, a choice I made yesterday when I made this. Okay, hold up. I actually wanna present this. Okay, so again, if I was doing this in a class, I would be logged into Genially, I would go and click present, and I would be like doing what I'm doing here, where I'm like, we're going to play a quick little game. And I'm going to pick start. Okay, question number one, where was I born? Does someone want to say it in the chat? So Leah says Louisville, Lois says Greensboro. What do you think, Jenny? She might be doing something. Raleigh, okay, three different options. We'll try Raleigh first. No, so let's try again. It was actually Greensboro. Great job. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the next question. How many print books are in Jackson Library? Yes, these are nice graphics. We don't have any. <laughs> yes, 500K. And, so great, three different answers. Well, let's try um, 500. No, so let's try again. From my research, it said uh, 1.2 million from this website. So one thing I did found about Genially, it did not allow for a hyperlink anywhere in here. I just had to put this like really ugly long link, but this is one of those collection, um, the collection description page that I found that said we do have 1.2 print volumes. Uh, it did not have great dates on it, sorry, um, but that's what I found. So who can say? So where did I study abroad? 
Rio de Janeiro, Amsterdam, or Berlin? What do y'all think? So Leah says Berlin, Jenny says Amsterdam. Lois says Brazil, I love it. Y'all are like being perfect audience members. So I did actually study in Amsterdam, Netherlands. So I didn't change the Ipsum tips here. I forgot, I guess, so whoops. But I could have said there, I studied film in Amsterdam. I did a nonprofit uh, class in Brazil over the summer, but it wasn't a full study abroad program. And I've actually never been to Germany, even though I lived in Amsterdam for six months and was like right there. It was just one of those silly things where I kept being like, I'm gonna go, and I didn't go. Oh, so here it is. I guess I accidentally added it twice. So there, I made a mistake in my template. So what are the name of the dogs who come to pet therapy at UNCG libraries? This did take me some like Instagram stalking <laughs> um, to figure this out. So uh, I was pretty proud of myself. Uh, again, I probably spent too much time trying to find some like definite names, uh, but I did it. So Lois says, bingo, Daisy, Gabby. Uh, anyone else have a different idea? Um, yeah, so Leah and Jenny say Kylie, Bella, Theo. It's Kylie Bello Theo. Y'all did it. Recruit NC Pet Partners. And actually, uh, Delilah Re Rico Harper, those are dog names from ROI. Uh, Harper is Melody. Delilah is uh, Rachel. Rico is my dog. And then Bingo, Daisy, and Gabby are the names of my pets growing up. I had a dog named Bingo, I had a cat named Gabby, and I had a dog named Daisy. Um, so, sorry. I'm used my own life a lot in this uh, game. <laughs> okay, are we the largest library in the UNC system, true or false? Yeah, I was um, literally a four-year-old kid, Jenny, and I was like, bingo. Um, we will name our dog bingo because, you know, the song. So I hear two falses. Yeah, everyone said false. It's true. I mean, false is true. And now we're at the end. And then if I was playing this in a game, so you can like edit it to be like, great, great job, questions, answers, that kind of thing. So that's how Genially works. Um, yeah, best, but not the biggest, yes. According to my Google research, UNC Chapel Hill, but I don't know if they're counting the fact that like they have the most, you know, I don't know how they're like doing that data. Again, this was, this was made yesterday. <laughs> Like, you know, where I was like, what are some just simple low state questions I can ask a group of people? Um, so that's how Genially works. So you can see it's not as like point based. It's not point based at all. Um, it does take a little bit more like you lead as the presenter and then there's not a winner. So I do think like it can be kind of useful if you're just trying to kind of like get your audience engaged. The way I first saw it used was um, the HHS uh, now they're called academic technology support specialists or specialists, um, used it when they were doing an orientation for grad students about um, technology. And then they just had like students raise their hand and say it. And every time someone got an answer right, they just like gave them like a swag thing, um, a little thing, which I was like, that's a cute idea of like getting people engaged in person or in Zoom. You could think of another kind of thing, right? And move on that way. Again, I find Kahoot, I would imagine Kahoot you know, because they're guiding it, right? And there is like a winner. I think sometimes people like that better and sometimes they don't. I think sometimes some people are like, this is annoying, I don't wanna do this. So like, this could be a kind of gentler way, right? If someone doesn't wanna participate in the game, right? They would just say, you know, I'm good. Like, I just won't raise my hand. I won't like say it in the Zoom chat um, or however space you're using it. So hopefully that was useful. Um, again, it was useful for me as someone who like, was like, oh, I'm gonna, um, I, I saw genially used and didn't know how hard it was. They're not hard to edit. Hopefully you saw that. Um, I did want to kind of end this um, on like just talking about badging a little bit because that is kind of a conversation. If you talk about gaming and instruction, um, sometimes badging does come up. 
So badging in higher education is that badges represent a way of acknowledging achievements or skill acquisition at a more granular level than a college degree. Um, credentials, the use of blockchain and badges in higher education continues to gain traction as a way to acknowledge achievement and establish qualifications in various professional fields. So when you hear about the Peloton um, uh, phenomenon, right, like that is kind of badging based, right? I don't have a Peloton, <laughs> I wanna be clear about this, but I've heard that the way Pelotons work is that, you know, you work out and they tell you like, oh, you've done X amount of minutes of workout. So you're top of your class and like you're getting like the best fitness badge, the like star Peloton badge, right? They give you these badges in the app and through the bike, I think. This is how this, I went to a, a, a library session actually at a conference about um, you know, gaming and library instruction, they brought up the Peloton phenomenon, right, of like getting people into it, engaging in that way. Um, so badging is kind of a part of that. And badging is becoming popular in terms of professional development tracking of faculty who maybe need to learn about like Canvas, online learning, things like that. Um, so we do at UNCG have an account. And Jenny, I'm going to um, answer your Gina Lee question in a second. Um, but let me just get through this. Is that the UTLC does run Badger, Right. Um, if you ever like want to learn about that. And again, they are, I think, kind of experimenting with how involved they want it to be within for faculty professional development. Um, so like stay tuned. But if you hear about it, um, here is their page on it. You can um, go ahead and see what tracks they have. Um, advancement of teaching and learning, equity, diversity, inclusion and technology enhanced pedagogy. This is pretty new. Right, um, I think they're still working it out with the restructuring of the UTLC. Um, but in case you see these badges, or if you see in a newsletter or something, right, like, oh, we are we're turning this on, we're doing it, Badger. Um, that is what this is. Um, so they do have kind of an FAQ, um, and again, I'm, it's kind of to me a little bit like. Uh, like the verdicts out right on like how much they're going to use this in terms of tracking professional development, but I did just want to say that is kind of sometimes brought up within the gaming conversation. Um, so Jenny did ask. Um, it looks like Jenny would take more time to set up. Do you think that's true? So Jenny provides you with those templates. So um, and all those templates have those like lorem ipsum tests. So I personally think it takes a little bit more time because you have to like go through and make sure you're changing out all the lorem ipsum text. Whereas um, you know Kahoot gives you that like blank canvas where you just plug and jug, right? So you just have to. I'm in my like very brief experience with Jenny. You're just gonna have to like practice, present. You know, make sure you like. Get rid of like I left that one page on there with Lorem Ipsum text by accident. I probably just like forgot to right click out of it. Um, but yeah, so I think it takes more time in terms of like it's more text based. So you have to like fill out the text, but that can be good if you want to give more context to the answers you're giving. Like how I showed you, like I could say Sam studied film in Amsterdam, right? Like, or she like did a nonprofit program. And you know, if you want to give more context, Kahoot doesn't really allow for a lot of context except for those slides in between. And even those, you can only put like one or two sentences of context, right? Um, so if you wanted to like ask a citation question and then have a fact about citation, you, you don't have as much text to play with. Whereas in Genially, you have more text options. Okay, so of course there's tons of things that if you're like this doesn't seem like it's for me i'm not into this um, i'm worried about my students not wanting to. Um, you know whatever um, you know I don't want to like have it be a competition i'm worried they're going to get uh, too into it or whatever there's, of course, a lot of other ways to engage your users that y'all have seen tons so i'm not going to like harp on it. Um, Jamboard is great, um, I know a lot of y'all in here use Jamboard so i'm not going to harp on it. Um, the other day I like liked how Steve did it in a class where he asked people to do um, metric like data metrics that they would want to find um, like about cities and then um, we moved all the sticky notes into categories right um, together as a group. So then they could visually see like the different demographics and how we would search for them, right? So it gave us keywords to search for and then it allowed us like movability putting into groups. Thought it was great. Just thought I'd share that in a group with we're all interested in teaching. So thought that was a great use of Jamboard in a class session. Um, Padlet is similar to Jamboard. Um, it has different templates. You know, it has that way where you can create like categories 
which can be nice, right? Um, you know, we should can do that in Jamboard by like circling, you know, something or like creating text you know, above the sticky notes, but Padlet, I think, does give it a little bit more structure. Um, but I think, you know, we've all seen this sometimes if Padlet's being used live, the way that like boxes move around can be kind of hard. So just be careful. I actually like to use Padlet more asynchronously um, where people fill it out ahead of time. Um, with any of these things, make sure you're sending out an editable link. Uh, same thing, right? Test it ahead of time. I think you all have seen Mentimeter so many times, I'm not gonna harp on it, but again, it's an anonymous engagement platform, which can be good because um, both of the, you know, this, both of the Gene and Lee and Kahoot are not anonymous in that way. And then Google Forms, you know, similar, right? I use it for assessment. And then, you know, I did want to point out, you know, good old reflection, right? Think pair share can work in person or on Google Docs, right, in a virtual space in person, um, you know, and also thinking through optional icebreaker activities, you know, I'll give like Jenny a shout out, like I think it's always nice to start out sessions or in sessions with kind of like icebreakers and gaming can kind of be like that, but I think, again, making them optional is nice because like not everyone is in a great space, right, to be like, I have something nice to share, I have something bad to share, whatever, and just kind of get, like letting people kind of participate as they want can be good if you have that option with your participants. Um, and then again, like just to re heart like to say something I've been saying throughout this, but interaction is about comfort level. Um, so like, you know, do what works for your teaching style, find a flow that works for you and a tool that you feel good about, right? Like, I don't think like, you know, Lois was pointing out in the chat, um, that, you know, like that uh, she played around with Gina Lee for school and I found it trickier to use than Canva or Google Slides, um, but there's tons of stuff to play around with. So like, if you play around with Gina Lee, right, and you just like don't feel comfortable with it, like, then don't worry about it. <laughs> like, that's the nice thing about having kind of an array of options, right, um, to play with. Um, and again, my big thing is like, they just give you a lot of lorem ipsum tests, which I think it just depends on what type of person you are. Like, is that helpful or annoying? I find it kind of annoying. Cause like, you know, again, I got to go through and make sure it's all gone, um, you know, and like be really careful about that. And as someone who always, who like is usually prepping the day before, or like maybe the hour before I'm teaching, you know, that can be kind of stressful for me, but that's just how I am. Other people might, you know, say other things. Um, so that's it for what I had planned for today. Um, you know, we're a small group. What do y'all think? Do you think you're going to use this? Are you already using it? Did you learn anything new? Or is this like pretty much a repeat? Anything else you want to talk about in terms of gaming that I missed? I do want to try Genially a little bit. Yeah. I don't know that I would use it necessarily for that. Well, like like Lois mentioned in the in the chat, and like you've shown me, Sam, some mm -hmm. of the um courses in public health, I think it was. Yeah. That had some Genially stuff embedded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're really cool looking, but I guess like my question, and you already uh, sort of acknowledged this is like, are they accessible? <laughs> because yeah. it, there just seems like there's so much going on in so many different, because it's so non-linear the way I've seen it yeah. set up in different courses. Yeah. So I, you know, again, I, I Googled like Gina Lee and accessibility and they pass, um, you know, some parts of WCAG um, uh, web content accessibility guidelines, uh, but not all, right? So if we're talking about 100% accessibility in terms of asynchronous content, which I do believe is important, um, I would be cautious. And um, if you're like, let's say you're using it in Canvas, um, I would I would test it with the Canvas accessibility tools. So, you know, Canvas, when you embed um, uh, anything in there, you can test with, with the you do it button. It's like you spelled you like do it like I don't know I guess that's how you say it out loud <laughs> um U D E U D O I T that doesn't seem right but anyway uh you can push that button and it will say like don't like this embedded thing or they might say like don't know you know right like this is too much um I would like to believe that if ATSs are using it to design courses that it's pretty good to go I cannot though 100% sure say that with accuracy. Um, again, um, I think it's like one of those, so like, you know, as you all heard me say at the beginning, gaming is hot right now. And it's kind of like skyrocketing in terms of this kind of e-learning industry. So I would imagine the next like two years um, that we'll see more, right? Like we'll have competitors to Gina Lee and Kahoot, you know, with different models, you know? So I would hope that because Gina Lee and Kahoot 
were here before uh, the trend, right? That they're gonna be kind of the most on top of it, right? In terms of accessibility. Like H5P, which I forgot to put in that other link of things, which is like an alternative to Gina Lee, they're very clear about their accessibility guidelines. And from what I understand from working with H5P a lot, which is um, interactive, you know, asynchronous content, um, but like uh, with HTML5, which is the most like accessible form of that, um, then um, there's not many ways to make an interactive image accessible. There's just no way because you're relying on images and text in a way that screen readers cannot understand. So there's always usually some kind of um, warning of that kind of stuff, particularly again, if you're if you're using something live in class, like if I do Gina Lee in class live and I am verbally saying it, I'm using transcripts in Zoom, right? Then that's different. That is actually creating an accessible space. If you're sending a link for students to do on their own, that's where you need to start thinking through things. And that would be also like putting them on LibGuides, right? Like I have not explored that, but if that's something we were gonna start doing, um, cause they do have like, you know, I think that's what that was when they said like embeddable images, interactive images, guides, that was like, I think you can embed things, you know, in these kind of website spaces. But again, I would, before like we as a department were to be like um, going uh, wild with that, I would wanna like, dive deeper but I, again from what i understand of not being a full expert another nice thing is we could of course if you or anyone was interested could on their own or i could help um talk to melanie um ely our accessibility coordinator at uncg and kind of be like we're thinking about doing this what, you know what do you think and if she was like well hold up then we would hold up but using it live in that way and even kahoot right um if you're verbally guiding people through it right or you're um using transcripts and zoom right then you're really helping in terms of like guiding people through it um and also providing people the option to do it or not do it is always the most accessible form and we in the library of course have that luxury more than like uh the in, the instructor of record um but yeah I'm sorry if that was like a long winded answer. No, that's question. really it's helpful to think about. Um, because yeah. yeah, I'm the same way where I'm like, I think interactive is cool, but like I can't in most scenarios imagine like what is a screen reader gonna do with genially? It's gonna be so confused by all the things. Um, but I'll I'll have to I'll play with that a little bit too. Yeah, and there's this page, I'll drop this in the chat, but um, I did like review this quickly, but not in huge detail. I mean, to me already, this is like not great with accessibility because you're like, you're hot spotting, right? Again, I, like how would a screen reader use this? Um, so great, um, but they're just giving you facts about accessibility, not necessarily saying here's how, they're just like giving, this is like a presentation on accessibility using Gina Lee. Um, but then if you, you know, does that make sense? So it's not like, you know, I don't, I don't know if someone made it or what. Um, this is like, I think I'm only finding like, yeah, people like making presentations about accessibility with Gina Lee, which is not what I'm looking for. Okay, so there's, this also makes me nervous. Um, there's no information. <laughs> this is made by a class thinking, you know, and they're giving accessibility one star. So again, I don't think that's great. Um, ease of use three, privacy one. So again, I think it's like for most things, right? Um, you're not gonna, um, I mean, I think, you know, y'all all know this about me, but I'm a big fan of UDL. You know, like, I would not recommend y'all move all of your <laughs> presentation materials or guides into Gmail, Lee, but I would, I would recommend you not put all of your content on a website either. Like, we're trying to create lots of different ways to engage our users, right? Um, and so Gmail Lee is like kind of a fun thing you could use once in a while, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally, because of what I have learned in my experience with it, use it for like a lot of asynchronous content, but I might use it like for an activity in a class if I'm trying to just quickly like answer, ask some questions. Because the templates were, I thought the templates of the games were like easy enough to use. Um, uh, again, the only thing, and I, this is just for me personally, the lorem ipsum text, like I'm, I was like, okay, there's a lot of lorem ipsum text in here. <laughs> um, and again, like I said, I'm just someone who makes my, course stuff usually like 
the morning of or like the day before, um, you know, and then if it works, I just keep using the same thing. <laughs> and then like, you know, if I'm like something didn't go great, I like go back and fix it later, but not the day after I teach or whatever. If something goes bad when I teach, I just like emotionally shove it from my brain for as long as possible. And then, you know, pretend like it didn't happen. <laughs> okay. Do y'all have any other questions? Think you might use it more, less? Kahoot, Gina Lee, did you like prefer one to the other? I just use Kahoot so much and it works for me. And I just answer, I, I ask citation questions using Kahoot. And again, I've gotten good feedback from students that are like, that was fun. And I learned some stuff about citations. So like stuff like that. I always ask in my citation, uh, Kahoot, um, you have to memorize your like, field citation style and like most of the time a majority say yes and I'm like no <laughs> no <laughs> I don't have like you know like AMA memorized <laughs> like like that would be awful um so it's a good like little like learning lesson for them right where I'm like no y'all you, you have the library you have guides you have zbib like so anyway it's always cute yeah Leah said that she's gonna use Kahoot more um yeah, again, I have been finding success with it. I like it. I have this one that's about citations that I can just make a copy of, right, for each class that I've just been using. And I can, like alter it based on whatever the assignment is a little bit, but it's just like a set of five questions. And I have been finding it's working pretty well. It's APA based, though. My favorite citation style, personally. Sorry, Jenny, MLA. <laughs> As long as it's not Chicago, I'm fine. No, I'm, I'm doing GES do right now, and ooh, ooh, yeah, they Chicago. like they like Chicago. They're using Chicago author date, and they are like, yeah, it's it's hard. I don't understand why like that's become a thing in the science because it's like if you go to the guide and like I've been learning a lot about Chicago author. It says sciences author date sciences. I'm like, why, <laughs> why, like, why are you doing this to these students? Um, not like GES, like, why is Chicago doing this to us all? <laughs> My question. Anyway, okay. Well, any other final comments, questions? We did it the full hour. Hopefully it was like useful, fun, a low key part of your day in a day where not everything is low key. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't, I haven't heard Rose. She's probably watching TV, as we all know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Lois and Leah, my kids watch a lot of TV um, when they're sick, especially. Okay, well, as always, this was fun. Um, I was thinking maybe for the October session, we might bring in someone from ITS to talk about Qualtrics, since everyone keeps promising us that that is not going away. Um, so maybe we'll be more reliant upon it. Maybe it's good just to get a refresher. Um, I've gotten a couple of questions about Qualtrics in the last couple of months. So um, have a little Qualtrics session. What do y'all think? Does that sound good? Yeah, I feel like I could always learn more about Qualtrics. I don't know how to do all the like jump logic. So that'd be fun. Well, have a good day, y'all. Um, good luck. We're in the afternoon. We're almost there. Bye, everyone.